Oh, holy shit. West Papua is home to over 300 different tribes, including one of the most isolated tribes in the world. How often are they being visited? This is not like touristic spot. They live in the jungle and they're moving nomad life. Four flights, a two hour drive, and miles of trekking through the rainforest has brought me here. Famous for their homes high in the trees, the Korowai people live and eat different from any place I've seen on Earth. This is the way how we survive in the jungle. Oh. Today, I'll be making contact. How do I say hello? Following in their footsteps. They just saw something in the woods here. And living the life of the Korowai people. been doing this now for over three years. Dozens of countries, hundreds of videos, and this is undoubtedly the most difficult and arduous journey I've undertaken. Yeah, watch your steps. The long shaky flights, sharing hotel rooms with a gang of roaches, and this seemingly unending trudge into the rainforest. It's all in the pursuit of documenting the world's most unique food. And something tells me I'm not gonna be disappointed. It's trying to look cool, did it work? This region has experienced days of relentless rainfall, more than usual. It looks beautiful, but one wrong step, one twisted ankle, and it could take days to reach proper facilities. We are on our way to the Karwai people, and it is no joke right here. There used to be a log, but it has fallen down. Oh, it's way too early to get my feet wet, man. It's never gonna be dry here. There is a current though, guys, so like, you gotta lean into it a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Done. Huh? Kids, what do you think, huh? No big deal? All right, they were here like half an hour ago. <laughs> Ideally, you've got feet with some callus built up so you can just feel your way through the water. Instead, I just got these on. So I'm trying to not get water in my shoe. These guys, it's like no issue at all. It's hilarious. The Korowai thought they were alone in the world until 40 years ago when first contact was made. Now, many Korowai have been drawn to a modern lifestyle, trading in tree houses for homes and villages outside the rainforest. But some, some still live today as they did hundreds of years ago. At this point, my biggest question is like, what do you enjoy eating? What is your favorite food out here? Is it just about staying alive or is there some food that's like the treasured food? Today, there are only 3,000 Korowai in Papua. What you are about to witness has never before been documented on video. Wow! Kotre, 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 Kotre. Big brother, the big chief come to pick us up. Ah, how do I say hello? Kotre. Go today, go today, go today. How far is the village from here? Almost 20 minutes. Are you hunting? He said uh, before I used to kill the enemy, but now I just come here to pick you up, not for killing you. For self-defense? Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to say thank you so much for allowing us into your village. And lastly, I brought some cigarettes in case you smoke. Do you smoke Marlboros? <laughs> This is a traditional Korowai treehouse. One side is dedicated to the women and the other side to the men. Amazingly, at any given time, there are two fires burning inside the house. Cooking is done exclusively in the home. We're under the treehouse right now. It's still raining, super muddy, but we're still gonna go hunt. How often are you successful? Sometimes they get it and sometimes they lose. When you don't get anything, what do you eat? They mostly eat in sagu. It's a staple food for Korowai people. Besides being their staple food, sago wood is also used to construct the floor, walls, and roofs of each home. Wow, where does it get the metal? From the missionary gave them for tools at home and then they use it for hunting. Is this usually the way you're hunting with a bow and arrow? Yeah. The Korowai chief will let us join their hunt, but only if we can keep up. The dinner menu is dependent upon what crosses their path during the hunt. Jungle rats, giant insects, or even tree kangaroos are all possibilities. A bow and arrow for the kill, and a dog to sound off when prey is near. Even with the hunting dog, they have to wait for the dog to alert them, and then they can actually hunt it with flipping arrows. So we've trekked for about 30 minutes now back into the jungle, away from their home, like even deeper from where we started. But we might have to go even deeper into the super lush, thick jungle to actually catch something. Your average city dweller would starve to death after a few days here. But for the Korowai, food 
is everywhere. This is the top of the palm tree. When I had coconut worms in Vietnam, I found you could eat the same thing like the coconut worms do, eat the very inside of the tree. It's very fibrous and watery. And it looks like that's what's gonna happen here. Kind of peeling the palm into- I'm Oh! <laughs> that was his portion. This is the really thick fibrous portion right here. And then here, I don't know. It kind of flowers up into this. Looks like a mop. I'm just gonna try it out. Oh, it's like a mushroom. I mean, the texture. Mm, not a strong flavor, just kind of watery and like a nice mushroomy kind of texture. Wow, that's cool. After a couple miles of rough terrain, it looks like mammals will not be gracing our dinner plates tonight. But that doesn't mean we won't be eating well. Right here, guys, is a sago tree. So they've harvested part of it in the past, and now they're looking for sago grubs. Oh, holy oh. shit. Oh my God! He looks pumped! Oh God, I don't like bugs! What? This is the worm? What? I thought it would be way bigger. In Vietnam, they're eating the coconut worms. It becomes a coconut weevil. They don't eat the adult form in Vietnam, but here they're like, fuck me in. Why not? They don't eat it alive. Maybe because it's a pain in the ass? I think he's just gonna squeeze the head. Can you? Oh. He just kind of rolled the head until it's just, uh, well, it's asleep now. Oh. Oh my God. Come on, come on. Look how many worms exactly, there are. Exactly. They've already harvested like half this tree after it's been sitting in the rain and kind of rotting. They come back and they look for beetles and worms and whatever else could be in there. But it has that sour, yeasty, fermented sago smell to it. And the worms, they love that. This is a special fern tree growing in the wild rainforest in the Korowai. When they're hunting, they take this also. But will they eat this? Yes. Oh, they will. We will eat this. This can be eaten? Yeah. With all their raw ingredients in hand, we head back to the treehouse to start preparing dinner. Believe it or not, we're actually up in a treehouse right now, and right here they're making this splendid meal. This is today's main dish, using ingredients caught from and found in the surrounding rainforest. It starts with a layer of dry sago tree starch, then a sprinkling of pica, a type of edible clay oh. material. It tastes like clay. Oh yeah, sure. Dry sand. Sand. The practice of eating earth or soil-like substances is nearly universal around the world in tribal and traditional rural societies. Clay minerals have beneficial microbial effects, protecting the stomach against toxins, parasites, and pathogens. And then they're putting on the fern, then they put on all the sago worms from the tree, and then all this kind of fern right here. Yes. And then more on top. So this is kind of like a giant cake or something. Giant pizza or something. Okay. You're gonna put all these super hot rocks on here. Now they're gonna bundle all these leaves. It's like its own self-contained oven. And all of this is just stuff they caught and collected from right around here. Yeah, so cool. Oh, they're gonna put it on the fire. Oh, wow. 45, 35 minutes on the fire, and then we're gonna bust that open and eat it. What is that? You said the dry one. You will try. What? The dry one. Oh no, it's a single it. worm. The sago worms that didn't make it into the main dish are put directly onto the fire and treated as an appetizer of sorts. Smoky. It kind of tastes like grilled chicken. I think because it's like singed, it's a little like charcoal flavor. It sounds like they're murdering a pig now. They're not. Turn it off. Throw it off. I'll throw it off. <laughs> Coming up next, you thought that was it, but what about the beetles from today? They're right here. The beetles we caught earlier from the same sago tree were dispatched for Doesn't easier transport. Wrong. Sorry, you're dead. We're gonna eat you for dinner. All of them are dumped onto the hot cinders to cook through. Cheers. <laughs> oh, it just tastes like soot from the fire. I mean, it's on there. It's like a little bitter. Can I get you one? Yeah. Not bad, that's pretty good. Don't fall in the fire. Okay, I was helping you. He's like, I got it. I'm already two, I'm fine. Boom, oh! So this is finished cooking. We're all gonna join together, and I don't know which way we're bringing it. I'll get right in. They kind of cook everything this way, whether they've got some pork or some tree kangaroo. Wow, look at that. That vibrant red-orange color is from the sago. It looks kind of like a pizza, except for this pizza has worms in it. Oh, it's super hot, but he's ripping it apart with his hands. She says, no, use this, be smart. And he says, yes, I agree, that is a good idea. Oh, and then this is how they prepare it. This is like one serving right here. Thank you. After a portion of sago pizza is handed to each housemate, they retreat into their own personal space to eat. Inside, oh, big sago reveal. That fern that we saw in the jungle earlier has kind of cooked down, it's kind of a, a mush. And then that is mixed with all the sago, and then there's just little chunks of worm throughout. I don't know, everyone just kind of rips it up and eats pieces. I'm gonna try it. 
This is sick, yo. This is so good. This is so weird. It's become this really gummy, chewy texture. And then the greens, the ferns have broke down. They're soft now. Earthy and grassy. It tastes like the jungle. Or it's about what you would expect. I mean, look at that. There's a giant sago worm right there in my next bite. <laughs> man, you really got to chew the heck out of it, though. That is out there, man. I must say, this is one of the most special moments of my life. Being so far away, a place we had to trek hours to through the rain, to finally being in this treehouse, their home, where they have a fire inside. They're cooking food that we caught today. It's so refreshing. It's so cool to see something this new, this different. It's beautiful. I love it. And it tastes, really, I don't know. It tastes like the jungle. Got a little bit of everything in there. Low sago, low worm, low greens. And that's Papua in a pizza. Every once in a while, it's good to get a reminder of just how soft I am. The real world for me consists of cameras, computers, and YouTube. The real world here consists of the real world. Using ancient knowledge, passed down from generation to generation, not through books or blogs, but through daily practice. Through my eyes, these rainforests are daunting and overwhelming. Where I see an endless list of potential hazards, the Korowai see food, they see medicine, they see tools, they see home. And a decade from now, when the apocalypse has wiped out most of the earth, when humanity is reduced to strangers battling over the last can of beans at a Walmart, the Korowai will be doing just fine. From researching and shooting, to editing and mastering. Our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. That has been Papua. I will see you next time. A peace. Hey, we got proof. Yeah. Before you go, let me tell you about our new merchandise. It's a shirt that says balls, but it's so much more than that. It's an ode to the wonderful ball-shaped food found all across our ball-shaped globe. Balls, 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 balls. Balls. Get your ball shirt or sweatshirt today by clicking the link below. And be sure to check out our second channel, More Best Ever Food Review Show, for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show.